Dr. Nixon? What is the truth about our ability to fight the growing menace of communism? Well, first, we must recognize communism for what it is. Mr. Khrushchev understands only strength and firmness. To apologize to him just means weakness. Our next president must show clearly that America won't stand for being pushed around anywhere in the world. When Mr. Khrushchev says our grandchildren will live under communism, we must answer his grandchildren will live in freedom. When he says the Monroe Doctrine is dead, we say the doctrine of freedom applies everywhere in the world. The only answer to communism is a massive offensive for freedom. Freedom from hunger, from disease, and a victory for the ageless hope of people everywhere. Freedom from tyranny. Vote for Nixon and Lodge. I have emphasized before that this was a struggle of Cuban patriots against a Cuban dictator. While we could not be expected to hide our sympathies, we made it repeatedly clear that the armed forces of this country would not intervene in any way. But let the record show that our restraint is not inexhaustible. Should it ever appear that the inter-American doctrine of non-interference merely conceals or excuses a policy of non-action, if the nations of this hemisphere should fail to meet their commitments against outside communist penetration, then I want it clearly understood that this government will not hesitate in meeting its primary obligations, which are to the security of our nation. I want to say a few words to the captive people of Cuba, to whom this speech is being directly carried by special radio facilities. I speak to you as a friend, as one who knows of your deep attachment to your fatherland, as one who shares your aspirations for liberty and justice for all. And I have watched, and the American people have watched, with deep sorrow, how your nationalist revolution was betrayed and how your fatherland fell under foreign domination. Now your leaders are no longer Cuban leaders, inspired by Cuban ideals. They are puppets and agents of an international conspiracy, which has turned Cuba against your friends and neighbors in the Americas, and turned it into the first Latin American country to become a target for nuclear war. The first Latin American country to have these weapons on its soil. These new weapons are not in your interest, they contribute nothing to your peace and well-being. They can only undermine it. But this country has no wish to cause you to suffer or to impose any system upon you. We know that your lives and land are being used as pawns by those who deny your freedom. Many times in the past, the Cuban people have risen to throw out tyrants who destroyed their liberty. And I have no doubt that most Cubans today Look forward to the time when they will be truly free, free from foreign domination, free to choose their own leaders, free to select their own system, free to own their own land, free to speak and write and worship without fear or degradation. And then shall Cuba be welcomed back to the society of free nations and to the associations of this hemisphere. I, a number of years ago, I heard a young father, a very prominent young man in the entertainment world, addressing a tremendous gathering in California. It was during the time of the Cold War, and communism and our own way of life were very much in people's minds, and he was speaking to that subject. 
And suddenly, though, I heard him saying, I love my little girls more than anything. And I said to myself, oh, no, don't. You can't. Don't say that. But I had underestimated him. He went on. I would rather see my little girls die now still believing in God than have them grow up under communism and one day die no longer believing in God. Communism is a fail system, universally fail system, and uh, I don't see socialism as a very useful substitute, but that's another story. Uh, Cuba is a, uh, unfortunately, a failed state in repressing uh, their citizens.